Allow me to play for you the song, which often greets eagerly awaiting Ford owners in the morning. <laughs> Don't do this. Seriously, don't do it. Three weeks later. Hey! Here's a word to the wise. This truck killed the cam sensor a couple months ago. I bought one from the green parts store and put it in at the customer's house. Didn't work, wouldn't start. He paid hundreds of dollars to have it towed here. New batteries and much head scratching later. I got a cam sensor from the orange parts store and it worked just fine. If they won't give me a refund, I'll throw this one as far as I can. But the moral of the story is, if it's a power stroke, you want OE parts. That's it. Well, you don't need all of your compressors. So why are power strokes? I don't know. I suspect power stroke owners don't know either. Before I say a whole lot more, I suppose I should say yes, I very much prefer the Cummins engine. I do not necessarily hate Fords. I just strongly dislike them. I don't have a whole lot more to say about that than Rich DeBoss does, so you could go watch his video if you really wanna know. But the fact of the matter is, the power stroke, even the 7.3, is more complex and ridiculous than most Cummins engines, and it can be a bear to diagnose and repair in some situations. I have absolutely nothing nice to say about six liters. Well, okay, once you dump 10 grand into them, you might have something kind of fast and loud and Chewbacca sounding, but other than that, they're just a ball of horrible. The 7.3 Power Stroke, on the other hand, does have redeeming qualities. For one thing, I routinely see these engines with well over 300,000 miles going strong, doing just fine, albeit with replacement injectors, glow plugs will have been done several times by then, and other common failure parts. I said glow plugs, so I guess we'll start there. This truck needs them really badly. It barely started today, took several tries. I'll be doing another set on a different power stroke in the coming weeks, and I'm going to hate that too, because they are under the valve covers. It is a ridiculous setup. The glow plugs and the injectors live together under the valve covers. And as you can see, the electrical for both goes through the valve cover gaskets. You can also see they tend to leak. The power stroke works on what's called a Huey system. Basically, the injector is triggered by an electric solenoid. But to actually fire diesel, it uses high pressure oil, pressurized down here in the H-pop high pressure oil pump. It has to make a whole ton of pressure to even start, let alone run well. This system has a couple advantages, but it also has several disadvantages. Most of the problems on these engines stem from the high pressure oil system. They tend to leak, and the sensor that reads what that pressure is tends to just die for no reason, and then your truck won't start. To know when to fire the electronic solenoids, it uses a cam sensor. It's down there. Well, you can't see it. And it's a pain to replace. Ask me how I know. Actually, it's not that bad. You can do it from below, but that kind of sucks in the snow. The magical computer to control those fuel injectors lives over here, right where it can get rained on. Perfect. There are multiple issues which can cause low boost, including obviously a worn out turbo, but also a flapper valve back there for faster warm ups. Occasionally they get unhooked or stuck shut and they no longer work. Also, these engines, at least in later years, I can't find one on this truck, use a back pressure sensor to detect how much boost the turbo is making. If this sensor does not work, generally because the line that goes to it is clogged solid with carbon, it's not gonna make boost right. This engine is in a square body OBS truck hailing from the 90s. In this incarnation, the 7.3 has a mechanical lift pump. It also has not a whole bunch of power. You can also see here that it's not intercooled. There's just a pipe that connects the turbo right into the heads. In the Super Duty trucks of 1999 to 2003 or so, the 7.3 did make more power. They upped the voltage controlling the injectors, they added an intercooler, and also the injectors are multi-fire. This did improve things somewhat. They make much better power, but they're still not exactly fantastic. 
You can see here someone did the same belt boo-boo as on that Cummins the other day. Eh, that's not the truck's fault. The single biggest issue with the 7.3, that would be the electronics they screwed onto it. The cam sensor, the ICP sensor or insane clown posse sensor, the IPR valve, the injection controller, the injectors themselves, all of those electronic components and more cause issues with these engines. Mechanically, they're very stout, but several of those issues can cause it to just not start in the morning and that's kind of a problem. Sure, the VP44 on a 24 valve Cummins can cause the same issue, but you know how many of those I've seen no start over the years? One, and it turned out it was actually a bad PCM, not the pump, although it did have codes for it. You know how many power strokes I've seen not start over the years? All of them. Some, like this owner's other truck, more than once. It's kind of ridiculous. If your H-pop does fail, the repair costs almost as much as an injection pump on a regular diesel. And while we're up here, what do you see down there? We'll pool oil. And there's another common issue. Thing is, Cummins leaks horribly too. And this is really common on just about any diesel. But these things, they tend to puke. The turbo, the H-pop, the H-pop lines, and the mechanical lift pump all have the capacity to leak oil right in the valley. When they do, it drains out of the back of the block and lands here, kinda around your starter. Sort of looks like this horrible mess, which leads owners, some owners anyway, to bring their trucks to me and say, hey, my Ford needs a rear main seal. Okay, apparently that was a diesel puddle, but that's fine. Rule number one on the Power Stroke 7.3, it's never the rear main seal. It might look like it is, but it's not. You need to look up in the valley. Fun fact, when I was a kid, I saw a blue crew cab OBS four wheel drive in Auto Trader, and I was in love. I actually do like these bodies. I think they're kind of cool. And as others have said, if you take one of these, ideally in crew cab four wheel drive F350 form, and dump it in a 12 valve Cummins, you just made just about the best diesel truck there is. Fact of the matter is, every diesel engine has problems. Except the P-Pump 12 valve Cummins. The P-Pump is perfect. Just about every Cummins produced since then has lift pump problems. And the newer VGT turbos, they're a problem. The Power Stroke has electronical problems. The Duramax has all kinds of exciting problems. Although in spite of that, I think they're really good engines too. The advice I often have for people is, everything has problems. I don't care what you buy. But if you buy right, you get something with problems that are manageable or even better, ignorable. Having said all that, I think these 7.3 Power Stroke trucks can be great work trucks. Just be prepared to pay someone like me to fix it when it strands you in your driveway. was just running. <sighs> There's another note on these things. They are incredibly cold blooded. And as mentioned, the glow plugs are a huge pain to do. So you can look forward to poor winter starting. Unless you keep it plugged in, of course. Side note, that horrible start was not caused by a glow plug issue and extreme cold outside. It was caused by high pressure oil either a lack of pressure or a lack of reading at the sensor. I did not disturb the high pressure oil system. Is that any better? I don't think so. If the magical electrical draw in my 2000 Cummins truck hasn't killed the batteries over a couple nights, it will start in this 40, 45 degree weather if I forget to run the grid heaters. It won't be happy about it. It'll smoke a little bit, but it will start in a few seconds. These seven threes, they don't do that. They crank forever. It is abysmal. Well, I think that's about all I wanted to say. If I have to think about Fords much more, I'm probably gonna have an aneurysm. Thanks for watching Dead Ford Garage. Okay, credit where it's due. This thing's actually pretty peppy. Guess it's got 215 extremely angry llamas. But you can hear one other power stroke problem I forgot to mention, perennially leaking turbo up pipes.